And you basically completely avoid the arena champion this way, who in my opinion is not even that worth it to kill because she drops like not that many scrap. Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're a returning viewer. I um, thought I'd put together a little bit of a dungeon guide consecutive all of the dungeons Conan thing because I've been doing regular dungeon walkthroughs slowly along the way with my let's play and as I would like to like include a lot of the later game dungeons a bit quicker than what I'm able to get to filming and editing all of them I thought I'd put together like a quick little guide on like what you need how hard they are what to expect where they are but yeah just so people get, know what they're in for whether they're a new player and they have no idea these dungeons even exist or they're a returning player and they never quite got to them. I'll show you how easy most of them are and kind of what you can expect to learn from them and gather from them etc etc. Yeah we're here at the dregs at Skulker's End. Super easy dungeon. Easily like a 1 or a 0 out of 10. All you really need to bring is a bow and an arrow. Can be a ship bow. Don't need to be level 60. Don't need good armor. Don't need good weapons. Maybe bring like a meat cleaver or something to hack up the abyssal remnant at the end because she does drop a lot of abyssal flesh when cooked good heal. There's also some lizards inside the dungeon and some blue goop so maybe a sickle pick to pick the lizards for the Erika. I think an axe works decently. So you learn the glowing essence recipe which is essential for sorcery. You learn the breathing potions, how to make the glowing sticks. Awesome, awesome torch. You can swim underwater with them as well as the abyssal arrows, the weapons which are kind of meh and you also get reptilian armor which is pretty decent early game medium armor. And all you really need to do to start the dungeon is lure one of these guys into here, kill them and this will open up. I definitely recommend coming to do the drags, super easy, don't be scared of it at all. Run in here naked, it's super doable. The next dungeon I'd probably try to come do would be the Burrow King. But all you need is a piece of demon blood, decent-ish weapon or some time and some rolling skills. He doesn't hit very hard. You want to use a pick to hack him up for more demon blood and you learn the Kingslayer Polearm and the Kingslayer Daggers, which in themselves, they're okay if you haven't learned the ancient stuff yet. Ancient Ike does um, a lot more damage than this, but the Kingslayer Polearm has a lot of reach. So it's probably about a one out of 10 for dungeon difficulty. To get to the area itself, you can either teleport to the Cursed Mounds, Mound Town, or run up along here or down along here or something if you find the white skeletons a bit too the blue glowy guys a bit too hard to fight down there and run along the cliff side along the green wall and jump down to the dungeon and all you need to do is have the demon blood in your inventory the demon blood required because no more inventory I do have a, a more concise walkthrough somewhere around here there should be a link if you want to check that out yeah definitely come do this dungeon don't worry about the area it seems scarier than it is it's not at all it's piss piss one of the next dungeons I try to do is over in the desert near Sepamaru at the Jobin, known as the Silver Mine or the Scorpion Queen dungeon. I also have a walkthrough video on that. If you want to check that out in more detail, you've got a three skull boss in there. You've got the Scorpion Queen who you can then make Scorpion Queen Venom from, which really speeds up fights. Super easy place to get to. If you have a thrall or some zombies, it's also a piece of piss. You don't have to even fight all the dudes in there to get the recipe for the poisons. But she also drops the Scorpion Ward Shield, which gives you plus hit resistance, which is nice when you go visit the volcano for one of our later dungeons. This dungeon's probably more of a three of a, or a four out of 10, especially without a thrall or some zombies. It's a little bit trickier. Um, I do recommend being closer to level 60 and having a decent-ish weapon and armor just because the scorpions are kind of annoying and they knock you around a lot and the poison and all of that. Um, some poison cures can also be advisable for sure. But it's not too bad without all of that. And uh, definitely bring a pick for all of the resources in there. A lot of silver and stone to be had. If you want a more detailed guide, like I said before, I got one up on my channel. One of my most recent videos at the time of filming this was actually me doing this Jebel Sarg dungeon. Go check that video out also for a more detailed run through. You can get a lot of hide here so definitely bring a skinning knife. Armor is not that important again and if you just want the recipes you can run through most of it apart from the bosses. I recommend also bringing a bow and arrow but you want to bring something like maybe gas arrows for the bull boss because he's kind of annoying and sometimes he runs into the gas and you can't fight him for ages so either bring a thrall or a gas mask and an encumbrance build is also kind of nice too if you're farming. Other than that the great source of tar the flesh of remembrance teaches you the double sog recipe 
And for, and for a little bit more information, like I said, you can check out the detailed guide. We get, we're starting to get into the point of the video where I have a lot less of these dungeons actually recorded, so I might do a bit of the boss fights. And this dungeon's like, again, maybe a four or a five, just because some of the gateway bosses that you have to fight can be a little tricky, but nothing in there's too hectic apart from the saber cats, but yeah. You'll see in the video. Now we're at the Witch Queen dungeon. Debatably, you could do before the dregs even. Like, if you come over towards the dungeon, it's definitely within this range of dungeons to do first. Like, you could do this one first, second, third. Whenever you get over here, don't be scared of it at all. It's very easy. You just need yourself. I've done it naked with stone daggers before because I didn't mean to and I didn't want to die. But once you enter, you didn't used to be able to exit. I'm going to double check if that's still the case or not. But you'll learn Lemurian armor here, which the Lemurian drop over by the Pagoda of Boundless Lust, which is epic armor. It's really good early game armor. Go kill some of those and then you'll be able to repair it very cheaply by doing the Witch Queen. I'd say this is a, a one or a zero even as well. First you fight these guys. Oh, well, apparently gonna fight that one first. Um, avoid blue laser beams and once she comes down, she hits kind of hard, but she's not that bad. She's a little bit tanky. As long as you can roll and you have semi-decent skills this is piece of piss as well and then to learn the recipe itself you touch the throne which she's sitting on once this purple disappears once you've killed her yeah see you can't leave once these guys are activated you have to kill everyone now as soon as you have decent weapons and armor work your way up the black keep just beyond the frozen bridge of the betrayer and the frost obelisk bridge obelisk just there these guys drop Decent as stuff. There's a few boxes around. Dungeon's like a five or a six, maybe out of ten. Relatively easy. You get a lot of skeletons in there, so spectral coatings is a nice thing to have especially for the king's Scotch himself you can use a bow and arrow to kind of cheese him a little bit it does hit kind of hard though so having decent armor is nice or some decent thralls and or zombies something like and or, or zombies something like that definitely to help out it's a fairly easy enough place to get to you don't have to fight all the king's Scotch skeletons outside you just kind of run through king's Scotch skeletons black ape skeletons the fancier armored skeleton guys but it is a really good dungeon to try and do as soon as you can it's a little amazing in there so i'll do a quick little speed through on how to get through and where to get the key then head left there's lots of hidden rooms about and more skeletons to fight Coming here as soon as you can to learn Legion armor. If you have a named armorer, they can make redeemed Legion, which has some of the best armor and cold and hot attribute stacks available in the game. So it is very, very nice armor to be wearing in the, in the cold or in the volcanoes. So definitely before you go do anything crazy like big volcano adventures, although you can without it. This makes life more pleasant. This door here, we might have to kill some of these guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Touch this box, get the key, leave this mistaken place. And then upon ent exiting this door, Whoa. Go through this door. Turn left. On this door. And up the stairs. You get a couple little stories along the way. Footsteps in my hallways. The living come as the living always come. They come for me, but the curse that holds me is stronger than they are. I am bound for eternity. I am lost forever. Come, living ones. I have not yet forgotten the art of war. A little note from the King's Guard. Fight him. I'm not sure if you still have to touch all the tablets, but I always do. I used to have to touch all the tablets. You don't have to fight him, but if you do want to make the Tilia's Sorrow or Tilia's Lament, you need to fight him to get his Black Heart, which you can also take over to Hanuman's Grotto, which is one of our honorable mentions in a moment. Now that move can kind of rail you. I'll do a more concise dungeon guide where I um, actually fight him and explore everything. And you jump, not up there, avoid him. 
Jump off here. Whoa! And try to avoid falling on everything. And we're back at the beginning. If that was all a little bit too quick for you, I will be throwing together an actual walkthrough soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Yeah, 5 or 6, super easy if you have a thrall to aggro sponge. Don't be scared, even if you just run through like I did without fighting anything, it's super cheesable. It's cheesable a level is like 10 out of 10, incredibly cheesable. Come and give it a go. If you're wondering where it is on the map again, around here. Side note on the Kingsguard dungeon, you also probably oh, black ape. You want to bring spicy meat as well, or something like that, some type of spicy something, because you can get cold going over the bridge of the betrayer, or even just up from the obelisk. If you bring spicy food, you can also then run up along here and then through the pathway, come up to the dungeon up here. Now, there's an awesome recipe to touch that's super cheap and then pretty decent for how cheap they are it's relatively easy if you didn't know you can stack things like iced tea and water for more cooling effect if you're really struggling ice effect covers over all of them though but it does cool you down for a little longer if you don't have any iced tea or icy things you can get some ice outside the volcano and there's a merchant in the portal just up here that sells iced tea for silver this dungeon is a little bit harder just because of the location it's not great bringing thralls here because they can just occasionally kill themselves in lava so bring one at your own risk for sure zombies sure why not bring them the dungeons like a like a four or a five again just maybe because of the location and some of the hyborians inside are kind of back you around a little bit the only thing you really need to bring is some obsidian and some steel you can mine obsidian around the place and killing volcano dwellers will drop steel so if you kill enough of the dudes around here before you go down to the well you sort it also a skinning knife is really nice because um there's a lot of the lizard serpent man guys in there to skin and it's probably my favorite hide farm over jebel sarg like one type of hide and lizard hide burns one for one and etc etc let me fix the daytime quickly now we're not just staring at my back in the night but doing the actual skelos dungeon will yield the obsidian pens and tools and the weapons are kind of mad but the tools are very good if not the best aside from black blood and black blood are kind of they have different reasons for being the best which i'll go into in a different detailed tool guide video that i'm filming but if you can run up here with just a little bit of spicy meat some decent armor mice pretty good to go like i said bring thralls at your own risk but zombies why not if my volcano video is not out at the time of release of this video you haven't seen it yet you will have to build some type of path if you bring a thrall because they do sometimes just get murked really quickly by the lava sometimes they survive good i just don't trust it you yourself can survive by just running over it but or jumping on those floating don't burn on them lava no longer instant kills you but it's also not great for health especially if you Right, you can build across just that, running down the path. These guys are aggressive. But we're going to do a little bit of as much cheese as we can. You can find named Tanners and Taskmasters down here. Ferris Flicker Tongue and Reza the Brutal. And you can find Second the Smith and its Secret Keeper, I think, as well, spawned somewhere around here. There's lots of serpent men to fight. Where's. Oh, there. there used to be a box there, I don't think. Climb up on something to lose their aggro. And you are going to need some ice for this part. Of I usually climb up here to touch the Surfer Man recipe first. Yep. Climb to the very top of tier that you can climb to. If you are struggling with the pace of how quick this is going, I will be including more detail in my actual walkthrough, so don't worry. I don't know why I went such a long way around. Watch the recipe, learn the things. You will have to have star metal tools unlocked to learn it though. I think that's level 55. We jump. It's scary and it makes my tummy drop every time. These guys are not aggressive unless you touch them. There's the Volcanic Forge, it has ag aggressive Hyperboreans and you need to take them out to be able to smelt down your obsidian into composite obsidian with your steel. Then you need to slay the Surfer Man boss. Hopefully my dungeon guide will be out soon for you to experience. Fighting the boss themselves is super easy. Just gotta kill all these ghost guys. 
Yeah, the ranking is literally just because of its location and some of the Hyborians and some of the other enemies on the way part. Boss himself is easily like a 0 out of 10. It's bizarre. And you kill enough of these guys, eventually he'll spawn in. And you get his thing. Up behind all the boxes, the recipe. Now, either to or from the volcano, I would hit up the Black Blood Caves to try and get that deep Black Blood tool that I mentioned before. Now, they are a random drop. You do have to come a few times. These are a bit more of an honorable mention. There's the guy who drops the tools. There is a couple of three skull guys that drop some certain legendaries that are fairly decent. One that drops the crew that drop keys for boxes, actually. The guy that drops the tool also drops a key. And Black Blood is also required for sorcery, so it is good to come here and collect some black blood anyway even if you're not interested in the tools or the other random legendaries that they drop pretty easy i um seen in another streamer weekend warriors video him fighting them on horseback and that stopped a lot of the knockdown and i'm definitely going to try that when i do film my run through of this for sure because that's the most annoying thing either bring a friend or a thrall for some aggro sponge because the knockdown can be very annoying probably don't come with the corrupted bill because hit kind of hard it's probably like a three or four out of ten for difficulty and all you really need to do is bring a pick or something to hack up the bosses with i'm being a advanced toolkit or some oils of bounty so you can whack them on your tools straight away and start harvesting especially if you're going from here to the volcano and you want to get some gold or something like that it's really good use um, a black blood pick with oils on it because you're going to get the most amount get a look at my oil guides and farming guides for a bit more detail on that if you don't know more about farming with oils of bounty there are a few caves we're around here on the map just near the great dam as i will be doing a run through on this as well i'll just go through it briefly the most notable cave for sure is the guy that drops the tools i also recommend um placing a bedroll for sure Somewhere around here or down there, place your bedroll. There's one outside usually and a couple inside. Definitely don't be scared of the area. Try out the horse. I'm definitely keen to. Do check out Weekend Warrior, who I learnt that tip of fighting them on the horse. I'm really excited to try it out. While you're around the volcano area, you can very easily run through a little portal up on the mountain. Run down that mountain, touch the obelisk, have it already. The Frost Temple is a great place to come. The swords and stuff themselves are fairly decent. We'll uh, teleport down there and quickly make some just to show you. You get an achievement for killing Hagar of the North, or however you say his name. You get some decent stuff off the giants themselves. They're a good source of thick hide. So bring a skinning knife or something to hack them up with. They drop some, definitely want some spicy meat and some buffs. Maybe a thrall because there can be a lot of giants at once and it gets very cold in there and they drop frostbite. They don't drop frostbite. They give you frostbite. But just for that fact, it's probably a six or a seven. Again, just for location and the possibility of gang banged. But the better your armor, the better your thrall, the better your teammate, the better your skills. Again, that score goes down a little bit. But it's about a five or a seven out of ten. Five to seven, depending on your run. Like sometimes you have real bad runs. Bring a skinning knife, bring a pick or a pickaxe to get all of the black ice. It's a great black ice run here. And you want to Bring like a hardened steel sword or something so we'll go show you that real quick if you fancy just chasing the dungeon and you don't want to kill the guys you can just run straight to the tablet behind bone that's essentially running just straight up from the stairs here ah my poison wore off now definitely applying poison makes this go so much quicker Once you killed all them guys. The Frostforge. Black ice. If you want to turn things. Oh, I didn't bring a pick. Just a decent enough pick. But I want to make the black ice broadsword. Those. Make axe. Didn't bring maul. Didn't bring spear. These are the type of things. And make here. Wait for that to craft. You can always go down and fight the dragon below. Go down there. 
there's more black ice but it is a bit tricky to get back up sometimes so be warned if you jump down definitely worth coming here just to get the black ice weapons they give frostbite kind of thing when you use them some of my favorite weapons use if i'm not using the lemarian ones and favorite ones you can cheese most of it until around here and then you do kind of have to kill these guys because it's a bit hard otherwise you can do stuff like jump up here and shoot them bring gas arrows pretty is gonna wait now make your way over to Kalil Stronghold near Sepumaru to do the Codebreaker dungeon. There's a couple of skellies out the front from the obelisk if you're teleporting here. Ask them. The arena champion can be an asshole sometimes. There's a few different ways to cheese so other people have a few videos on that and I'll touch on a few of those things in my actual run through as well. But there's a really good way to just avoid her altogether which I'm going to show quickly in this. Now the Godbreaker dungeon is debatably one of the harder dungeons just because of this guy in front of me but if you've done it before it's easier so it's really only hard the first time and it's not even that hard if you have a decent roll and weapons and you've already done the king's guard dungeon so you have some hopefully redeemed legion hopefully also seen my lemurian axe trees getting recipe but i will also cover more of the dagon's dungeon in a moment but once you have the keys from killing this boss there used to be a box right here too, but you could get infinite keys out of it in crash servers. So. But uh, run past all of them from the entrance. We are here at the Brimstone Lake. So you can teleport to the obelisk really easily. Now you got a couple of these guys that you got to kill as well. It's good to kill them every time, even if you've got the key, just for the chance to get some of their weapons are really good. I do go a bit more into them in some of my more detailed run throughs. If you're looking at what weapons they drop and how to fight them, but they're essentially they are really easy. This done is only about a 5 out of 10 at the most. It's a good source of black ice, so bring a pick with you. A good source of some demon blood as well as some hides for a skinning knife. I think I mentioned before some nice armor, some redeemed legion or something like that, and some decent weapons and a thrall. You don't have to fight most of the bosses. You only really have to fight some of them the first time. Show you how to chase that guy if you already have the key now that there's no box drops the key you have to kind of fight him the first time but as long as you avoid his wampa chompa attack because he has a great sword it's not great it's a very great sword that messes you up but now you've got all the keys from these doors you have a little story on the ground that i will read in tradition i do not know what i have found here this architecture is not familiar to me yet it speaks to me entices me it wants me to explore it further I've heard voices in a foreign tongue coming from the other doors, and I have no interest in finding out whom they belong to. This door interests me, though. It is blocked by some sort of mechanism? It may have something to do with these statuettes that I have found. Well, they were lying around the place, so I picked them up. I will try my luck with opening this door. They don't call me beyond the lucky for nothing. So he's referring to the statues you get from killing the giant kings, which you then come place in the map here, here and here, which will then give you the key to the inner sanctum. Also, a quick note, this last guy, the middle guy with the red door, he drops some um, books that are kind of like potions and food, but I think they now replace potions. I think that should be like a third thing, make them kind of worth it. But anyway, I digress. That's not actually one I pointed out. He's um got a lot of scrolls in his room. And if you look around on the floor next to the scrolls on the walls, you can find sorcery scrolls. It's kind of cool if you've been struggling to find them elsewhere. They're usually there if you're on an official server or something like that. A lot of people don't know about it. Now this guy down here, you need to get the key to the arena. There's also a bunch of rusted keys that you need for the armor scraps once you've learnt the arena champion armor and weird floor and the god breaker armor. The floor's not usually like this. Avoid the trap. I'll show you exactly where to get those keys in the walkthrough. You don't have to fight that blue guy down there. His weapons aren't that great anymore. They used to be really cool. I'm just going to hit every trap apparently. That's the door that he usually opens, but there is a crack in the wall right before the door. They cannot fit and you basically completely avoid the arena champion this way, who in my opinion is not even that worth it to 
kill because she drops like not that many scraps. And yeah, the Godbreaker armor is really nice. And even some of the champion armor is not too terrible, even though cleansing this one and we don't. I digress again. The Godbreaker armor is kind of expensive to make and you do need some scraps for that. But whether it's worth the time and effort to kill her and potentially getting one shot, I'm not sure. So I usually avoid her, but I do try to grab all the keys, the rusted keys from around. Uh, they have an hour timer and um, you can pop them in the fridge. You'll get an extra key because there's five keys, four doors. Get home quickly if you live nearby or there's a map room nearby. Pop them in a fridge and then next time you don't have to get all the keys or they add up and then sometimes you just run straight through. Because it's good to farm the giant kings for some of those other weapons, even though they're not as good as they used to be compared to some of like the Sifter weapons, for example. But yeah, they're still nice to have, especially to put on your thralls. So there is the arena champion there. And we still kind of want to go learn her recipe a little bit. It might end in death for us if we can't ag not aggro her. I wish like crouching did some type of sneak effect. I think we might have aggroed her. Get to turn around. There's a box here that usually has a repair kit in it. Um, it did not, but I'll take it anyway. I think we didn't aggro her. And the recipe. Yeah, and totally can just avoid this step. Oh, I meant legendary repair kit. Yeah, if you don't want to fight her, go through the crack in the wall. Completely avoid her altogether. Might have aggroed her that time. Oh, still no. Good. Love that. Fun. Get all your black ice from here. Some people aren't aware that this is in fact not just decorative black ice. If you're after skulls, bring a Zaf knife. There's lots of spiders. As you know, Zaf knives yield a lot of skulls and ichor. A couple of creatures going on. Now, there is a bone skeleton and some turtles in here. They'll fight each other for some time. And another fun fact about this dungeon, it is one of the only legendary key boxes I know that you can open before level 60. Do manage to get a legendary key before level 60. This is how you basically choose your way in and I believe you've got some clan mates or something like that that have got the keys or you can sit there and bow and arrow a lot of the dudes as well. Damn crippler guys. Mammoths for some elephant hide. Although mammoths take a long time to kill and they don't drop that much hide. Now really the only guy you can't choose unless you're playing on a server that has keep loot on death is the actual guy himself. But you can die. That's what I want to mention. And you'll notice there is a yeti. You can in fact not interact with the yeti at all even if you ghost through so that's kind of disappointing. I always kind of wanted it to be another secret boss like you had to use a bomb here or something to be able to get into him. That would have been cool. Lots of missed opportunities. This guy himself isn't too hard. There's some traps that are kind of annoying though. It's nice to bring a thrall just for an aggro sponge. Zombies if that's what you choose. I have no health, so this is going to be fun. Just avoid his thunder. Welcome to the jungle. This is almost our last dungeon. It's come to here at this little Dagon Spay place. Touch the butt. I'm here. You don't really need to bring much apart from a water mask, which I have a guide on how to use that good. But if you haven't seen that, I'll show you quickly here because you've made it this far. Put that on. You don't need to keep it on the whole time though. So if we change back to that, we'll jump in this water to demonstrate. We have no breath tracker. They haven't patched it yet. They, As it is a bug, they likely will patch it at some point. But if you haven't gone and killed Tamer, over on this little ledge here. I'm fairly sure it's a 100% drop or I'm just super 
lucky. I don't know. You can get some potions, uh, some breathing potions fairly easily, either by killing people around the map from loot boxes or by doing the dregs dungeon and actually getting the recipe. There's several recipes to learn here and I will be doing again a more detailed guide on this eventually because it will be a much longer video just by itself. Just to even run through it briefly is quite a long time. It is probably a 9 out of 10 though. Like People think the Godbreaker dungeon is the hardest but I'd say this one is especially solo because bringing thralls here is kind of risky too. If you die you do spawn in the dungeon spawn right back here but unfortunately sometimes thralls cannot be commanded again or they'll just disappear you can't find them and that's really annoying and you have to wait for them to return home and then you're on your own and also sometimes finding your body when you die in water is frustrating uh using the water mask trick you're not going to run out of breath so that's nice there's one thing you don't have to worry about coming here you don't have to kill any of the boss you essentially can run past most of them until the end boss if you want to leave in a timely manner there are portals at the end that open up once you've killed her but essentially if you just want the recipes you can run in and touch most of the tablets and run out again quite easily but they do drop certain things like um the people guys like the captain above and below and stuff they drop the pearls which you need to for buying the sword and the shield from the lady at booty bay um don't think i mentioned that in another video before the short sword and the shield are kind of meh. they might do cool stuff now i will have to go check out what they do actually anyway i digress probably want to bring like a pick or a skinning knife to get the scales off the fish guys because you can then make fancy fish traps which capture some buff fish which will do the same thing as buff foods again now nothing all the things don't stack together they aren't really that necessary there are some really nice recipes here like the lemurian axe the daggers of dagon used to be some of the best daggers still are very up there for sure probably the best on exiled lands other than double sugs prowls you can get it from the giant kings at the god breaker dungeon there you can either run up that way touch the first lemurian axe recipe run over and jump straight in here yeah. don't bother killing these guys can't tame them anymore but at one point you could there's a nice little cave down here full of boxes that have gold and silver in them there is also a um one of the recipe rooms i think it's the fish trap room in fact has a infinite spawning slugs which you can use a pick on for echo especially have you have the second perk of careful harvest if it procs on efficient harvest with the echo you can also get a lot that way there's a lot of glowing group in this dungeon as well as some random boxes about and because you're not running out of breath you can swim around all the time those dark clouds are poison avoid them i'll show you exactly where all the rooms are and stuff in my walkthrough but for now come and explore got infinite breath what do you have to lose try to not get hit by any of the fish dudes though if you are planning on just cheesing it which with this um fish mask fish mask hack underwater breathing i think i'm on pv what it again the underwater breathing fish mask um with this fish mask hack underwater breathing mask hack jesus man you can basically take your time down here and really get to know it so i advise coming and doing it before they patch it especially if you're on a server that you want to stick with or you're on your own playthrough and you can run through and just touch all the recipes don't have to fight the guys run out there's nothing particular in these temples just now we've finished all the big dungeons we're on to more of the honorable mentions they still are kind of classed as dungeons they have kind of bosses in them one of my favorites to come to especially on pvp because it's a nice little crystal hanuman's grotto i like to come here though once i've gone around killed a few things gotten up some different types of hearts get um those from actually killing the boss inside this is a zero out of ten maybe a one out of ten if you're naked and you're super low level lots of imps that's a crystal so bring a pack there is an imp king in here if you do happen to have that for your battle pass and you haven't gone to solo player and just one in or something more glowing group in here a huge amount but it's there kill this guy who's kind of hard at times but you can chase him by standing on stuff and using bow and arrow if you can get him in the water he doesn't teleport out like that now he's gone touch here a bunch of times see what you don't get with all your different types of hearts oh he came back back in the water so sometimes you can attack him when he comes in the water other times he'll just disappear for a sec or you can kill him and get a withered heart depending on your effort level you used to do a whole bunch of fat all in here. But now you get cool things. Potions and villas and grey apes. And sometimes you can get yetis depending on the RNG gods. No? Hanuman gods. Definitely come check it out. Great source of crystal. There are the better sources of crystal, but there are some reason barely anyone seems to ever come here, so 
The sinkhole is a bit more of a bigger honorable mention, almost a whole dungeon in itself, depending on if I had to go in from the river and arena or come in via elevator. I advise building a fast one because this regular one is low as all hell. It's pretty easy. You're out of 10 doing the elevator. You get Grey Lotus in here. There's little boxes around. Uh, touch the recipe over there. Dragon bone armor and weapons. Really nice. I kill a baby dragon way easier than an adult dragon. Unless you need dragon bone horns for something um, like sorcery, like a lot of dragon bone horns. And then killing the red mother yields a lot of dragon bones. And that's also another decent honorable mention is the entire red city is full of little mini bosses that you can fight for some nice weapons as well. A lot of chrome and some cool cool um, armor like uh, vermin hide pants, war dancer top, the chief, the uh, war chief top. A couple of cool things. A feather helm could be nice for trying to like not get rid of your corruption. A couple of cool builds that may be able to be had again with some of those things from there. A nice little thing that you can do when you're bored. None of them are too hard. Maybe like a three out of ten. We've got a throw in a decent build. Lots of fragments of power. Give that a go. Coming down to Weaver's Hollow and Scotless Shortcut at the Southern Aqueduct. There's a lot of crystals, so bring a pickaxe. There's a lot of ichor and spiders, so bring like a pickle if you need silk, I guess, and a zath knife if you need ichor and skulls. You can learn the zath religion in here. Both of them lead to the same place. I do feature it in one of my Let's Play episodes. If you want a bit more of detail on how to get here, what to do when you're in there. Also a big boss spider, who I don't fight in there. But you can fight her. She's a regular queen spider that you find in places, Ari Dungeon, and over on like the island over here. Other than probably the Dagon's Descent dungeon, the Kari dungeon would have to be one of the harder ones. Some of the mini bosses in there are quite mean and it's a very, very long dungeon. I'm going to give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Pretty chaseable. A lot of bosses in there. Takes a long time to do if you're going to do all of it. To give yourself some time, bring a couple of torches because it is also dark as hell. Lots of bark at the end to bring a very good source of bark. There's lots of skeletons in there and bringing something like spectral coating and some poison. You can get Kari steel in a lot of boxes and it's a really really good source of relic fragments in here. Way better than the unnamed city, one of our honorable mentions. You can also have a chance of when you kill Thag at the end, he might drop a scythe, a mace, or a warhammer. They all used to be really, really good, but the warhammer was like excellent. Super rare drop. Don't know what they do now that legendaries are kind of useless. But you might also get a scroll for one of the armors. And the armors also used to be really good. And they can be cool for transmogs and some different builds now too. Haven't messed around with them much since 3.0. Definitely worth checking out. If you go with the tribe, unfortunately, it's not like a regular dungeon and only one person gets to learn the recipe. There's no tablet or anything. And because yay RNG, you might not get the one you want for a really long time. Hey, you can also get the Seth's truncheon from the first mini boss if you've got good RNG. I got mine first go on this playthrough, which was cool. You can also tame the relic hunters in here at the beginning. A couple of mini bosses who drop Kari weapons that are slightly better than the ones that you can make once you know the recipes. And there's lots of other goodies to be found. Definitely bring a few torches, like I said, lots of heals and probably a thrall if you or some zombies if you're planning on fighting mini bosses in the mazy bit. And it's super mazy. So uh yeah, have fun with that. And we'll get on to some of our honorable mentions. Now I'm in cloak mode just for the sake of not having to run around from away from skeletons but these skeletons are usually aggressive we're over here at king's niche at mounds area if you come all the way inside there is a giant king that you can fight he's a nice source of demon blood and silken wraps which is the main reason for coming here there's also a lot of gold and silver boxes these guys also usually drop steel and other goodies kill him he's not too hard with you see his 17 health you get a key from him and then there's all these boxes yeah, just because of all those skeletons out the front and the area, it's probably a two or a three. If you've got good weapons and armor and friends, it's nothing. Walking apart. These are mostly like solo ratings and doing it very bare bones and potentially under level. If you're level 60, you got all the good stuff already. You don't need a guide on these dungeons. If you've been struggling to get brimstone because the lake is always mined or whatever it may be, the spider's almost got me. I am in cloaked mode. 
as I mentioned before. Um, you can come here with a pick and get all this as brimstone. A fair chunk of brimstone. And we're at Death Whisper Ruin here at the map. We're going to do Executioner's Cave. I'm going to say this is a 4 out of 10 sometimes because even level 60 and with all of the armor and weapons, there are so many skeletons and spiders in here that occasionally you can get clusterfuck and completely gridlock by them all and you just can't do anything and they'll kill you. Especially if you get locked somewhere like in there trying to avoid them. Fair chunk of metal in here boxes about skeletons. And then this guy, killing him, you can get a couple of really cool things in Executioner's Axe and Executioner's Blade and the Hood of the Executioner. Hood does increase damage to strength weapons. I'm not sure of its percentage currently. There may be better craftable things, but it looks cool. Even though you can transmog a serpent man. Hood, Skele Hood of Skelos, um, that's beside the point. It's heavy and it has lots of armor. It's kind of cool anyway. And he's not too bad to kill, so he might as well come and have a crack. The Executioner's Axe is one of my favorite axes because it's an axe I like axes and the blade is cool too because they um execute when they've taken enough damage they um just drop dead all of a sudden on that swing so it's a lot easier to take down a lot of big things using those it's definitely worth in killing don't know what's going on in here this didn't used to be here an AOC that's for the underworld underworld is all underneath this map that's really cool it's also worth mentioning that he also has a chance to just drop a relic fragment or a relic and execution is that Another excellent source of brimstone and vital thing if you actually want to technically finish the game and you need to make the keystone, you need to come here to Gulliman's Doom. Let's brimstone about, bring a pick, probably a skinning knife. Heaps of brimstone in here. The Gullman, the big boy himself, he's pretty easy to kill when you're not in cloaked mode. Writing you have stamina. I come up to get the jacket Scourge Stomp piece if you so desire to visit the Altar of Chaos Mouth and remove your bracelet and fight that mummy dude. It should almost be an honorable mention, but I don't want to recreate my character right now. But we won't do that. This door does nothing. It should do something. I've probably for sure missed something. I can't think of what it is. I know there's something. There, I tried to have a list, but you know, you're gonna miss stuff. If you can think of what it is, please do put it up in the comments. And um, I'll run through a lot of these a lot better in upcoming walkthroughs or current walkthroughs. There should be somewhere on the screen right about now a link to my dungeon guides if you haven't already checked them out and some other cool tips and tricks videos that can really help you on your way. If you're a new player or you just want to get to know a bit more about the game from someone who's got over 5,000 hours to guy. I hope you found this informational informative that one uh, don't be scared of pretty much any of the dungeons they're all super cheesable in the end and you can get most of the recipes without fighting most of the bosses if you don't want to you just want the recipes but again most of the bosses aren't that hard give it a go if you do die you, most of the dungeons you're going to spawn back at the beginning except for a few like um the frost temple they have obelisks at them anyway and you know bed rolls bed rolls are good always place one if you're unsure that you may not make it out the other end hope someone got something from this at least until next time which will hopefully be a little bit of official pvp scepter playthrough or um maybe a little bit more of the current exiled lands playthrough i've still got a little bit of that around until then i hope you have an excellent morning day evening night whatever it may be wherever you may be